Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review of Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. So this is a science fiction novel and it was published in 2022. Our main character is called Mickey and he is an expendable on this mission. An expendable is the person who you give the most dangerous jobs, even the suicidal jobs to, because you can make a new version of them. They do this by bioprinting their bodies and then downloading the personality, so he is essentially a clone of himself. So in this universe, humanity has spread across lots and lots of different universes. There are humans living on all sorts of planets across the universe, and that is called the Union. So they left Earth after this awful war which involved antimatter, and they left Earth and started spreading across the universes because they realise if humans are left to their own devices and left together, they will eventually kill one another. So the first ever mission in this story was called Eden. They were the first people to leave Earth and start colonising different planets. Now there are lots and lots of different planets with humans on it, and he is on a mission to go to this planet, which is an ice planet, and they're going to try and set up humanity there. So there's around 200 people on the mission and the rest of the people are embryos and once they get there and set it up the idea will be they can start a whole new colony of humans on this planet. So I did enjoy this one, I've given it four stars. I will say that I wasn't 100% sure in the beginning so I probably read about 50 pages or so and I was debating whether to DNF it or not. That was just because I wasn't really connecting to Mickey as a character, I wasn't particularly warming to him, he's not the most interesting of characters and I, I didn't really like him all that much. But I am glad that I carried on reading it because I did ultimately have a good time with it. I think it's a really good, fun science fiction, but it's definitely not going to be a new favourite and I think there are going to be quite a few comparisons with Andy Weir. Even on the back of the book it says Andy Weir, watch out, and when I read Project Mary. I absolutely love that book. It's one of the best science fiction books I've ever read and I really really enjoyed it. So for me personally this really isn't on the same kind of level as that book, it isn't in the same league unfortunately, but I can see where the comparisons are going to come from because even when I was going in to read this book I was thinking is this going to be one of my new favourites like Project Hail Mary was. But for me personally, that book was just so much better than this book for me and I really, really love that book and I think this one was good, but it isn't a new favourite and I don't think it's really comparable for me personally. One of the other comparisons that I would make though is it's a little bit similar to the movie Moon that came out in 2009, which I really enjoyed. It's one of my favourite science fiction movies. Again, I would say that one is a lot better than this one, but there's similar kind of themes and similar kind of vibes, and I feel like you could draw comparisons between that movie and this book. So, yeah, I did enjoy it. I think... <laughs> Little parts of it were not as interesting as other parts. I think it could have been, it had some really interesting kind of thought experiments. So I will just read you one quote from page 18, just to give you a little bit more of an idea about what kind of the premise of this story is. So here we go. Here's a thought experiment for you. Imagine you found out that when you go to sleep at night, you don't just go to sleep, you die. You die and someone else wakes up in your place the next morning. He's got all your memories, he's got all your hopes and dreams and fears and wishes. He thinks he's you and all your friends and loved ones do too. He's not you though. And you're not the guy who went to sleep the night before. You've only existed since this morning and you will cease to exist when you close your eyes tonight. Ask yourself, would it make any practical difference in your life? Is there any way that you could even tell? Replace go to sleep with get crushed or vaporise or set on fire and you've pretty much got my life. Trouble in the reactor core, I'm on it. Need to test a sketchy new vaccine, I'm your guy. Need to know if the bathtub absinthe you cooked up is poisonous, I'll get a glass. If I die, you can always make another me. The upside of all that dying is that I really am a shitty kind of immortal. I don't just remember what Mickey Wan did, I remember being him. Well, all but the last few minutes of being him anyway. He, I died after a hole breach during transit. Mickey too woke up a few hours later, sure as shit that he was 31 years old and had been born back on Midgard. And who knows, maybe he was. Maybe that was the original Mickey. 
Mickey Barnes looking out through his eyes. How could you tell? And maybe if I lie down on the floor of this chasm, close my eyes and pop my seals, I'll wake up tomorrow morning as Mickey ate. Somehow though, I doubt it. Nasher and Berto might not be able to tell the difference, but deep down on some level below reason, I'm pretty sure I know I was dead. So that's the kind of premise of the story. I do like some of the kind of moral philosophical questions we looked at such as the ship of thesis example in the sense that if a ship leaves and then you continually replace all the parts of the ship once it gets to its destination is it still the same ship so in his case if you replace all the parts of him is he still the same mickey as he was before so it has some kind of interesting questions about kind of clones and if you are still the same human and they kind of didn't fully explore the topic but it was something that was raised and I do think it was kind of an interesting moral philosophical questions that have been posed in this book and the other thing that's interesting is the way in which humans will kill other animals and plants to dominate these new worlds and what's the kind of moral dilemmas and implications of that so generally speaking if animals and plants are there they will most likely destroy them all and then they will start colonizing the planet unless they're considered sentient so that's quite a big part of this story so if there is an animal that's considered a sentient um can you kill them can you not kill them etc is it morally allowed to kill that living you know alien species that was the original indigenous species just so you can live there and there's all those kind of questions and I do think that was quite interesting. I would like to have known more about that side of it. So there is an alien species on this planet that they land on and they're called creepers and I do think they were very interesting. I would have liked to have known a lot more about the creepers and I would have liked that part of the story to be developed a little bit more fully because I really enjoyed that part. I thought that part was very, very interesting. Every time the creature, the, the creepers were part of the story, I was very engaged and I wanted to know more about who they were and, you know, what their society is like and their culture and what's going on with them. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think it's a story that definitely looks at some interesting themes of science fiction and looks at some kind of moral, philosophical questions. And I had a good, fun time with it. I think it was something I enjoyed. I was entertained. And I'm definitely interested in reading the second book. But in terms of like the comparisons against kind of like Project Hail Mary, it's, it's definitely not a new favourite for me. That book made me laugh out loud. And this one is, I suppose, humour is obviously subjective, but it didn't make me laugh out loud. Loud, And I can appreciate sometimes it's trying to be funny, but I didn't find him all that amusing, his character and some of the other characters that are in this story again i didn't find them particularly amusing and I, I think one of the problems was i didn't really connect to any of these characters in a great way so to compare again to project hail mary i really connected to the main characters i really really liked them i really was interested to see what was going to happen to them i wasn't really connected to any of the people in this story so he has a best friend here he has a girlfriend, there's another girl who's important, you know, there's the commander, but again, I wasn't really particularly connected to anyone, and I feel like none of them were really fully developed characters that I could really, like, really truly connect to. But yeah, it was a good fun time, and the reason I wanted to read this is because I am aware of the adaptation. So it's been filmed, and it's going to be released as Mickey 17 rather than Mickey 7, and it's going to be starring Robert Pattinson, which is one of the reasons I wanted to read it, and um, because I wanted to read it because I wanted to see the movie. So I decided to read this book now because the movie was meant to be released in about a month or so, but I have since learned that the movie has been pushed back till 2025. Um, I think the movie has the opportunity to be better than the book in this case. The director is very, very famous too. He's the one that did Parasite, so I do think this is probably going to be quite good as an adaptation. I think there's a lot of really interesting core philosophical, moral kind of questions that we're discussing in this book. And I think it's probably going to come across on film very, very well. And I'd be very interested to see how they kind of show the creepers and the idea of, um, you know, animals being sentient and whether we have the right to take their will from them. Um, so yeah, and obviously the main kind of 
concept of the story in terms of there's different versions of Mickey. There's Mickey 1, Mickey 2, Mickey 3, etc. all the way up to Mickey 7 and, and then all the way up to Mickey 8 and seeing the kind of complications of that. And the other thing that was interesting is the moral question in terms of um, people who are expendables which he is, are very, very rare. So yes, technically you are immortal in the sense that you can't die because they will always be able to make a new version of you and download your personalities and they'll look exactly like you did and be exactly the same as who you are. Um, but then there's other parts of society that if it goes wrong and then there's more than one of you because obviously if we did this, certain people who are wealthy or whatever or powerful could have lots and lots of copies of themselves and then you would be classed as a multiple but that's something that's very much frowned upon in society it's something that is abhorrent and people don't like the concept of multiples because um something happened in the past where a particular man who was very wealthy made lots and lots of different versions of himself and tried to take over an entire planet and then presumably the whole universe so the idea of a multiple is abhorrent is abhorrent in this story so obviously when that kind of happens to mickey it's uh very dangerous and it's something that's very concerning for everyone involved although i will say considering how concerning it is they do make some really really silly mistakes which means they you know anyway i'm not going to get into that because spoiler territory but yes i like the ideas i liked the themes i had a good time with it i think it was a fun read that's the thing that i would kind of stress the most it was fun it's not the best piece of science fiction that I've ever read and I wasn't particularly connected to any of the characters but I had a good time with it. It was fun, it was entertaining, I think it's going to make a good movie and I'm definitely going to watch the movie when it's released and I'm definitely going to read the sequel as well because I am curious to see what's going to happen next. And like I say, I thought the idea of the creepers was very interesting. It has some interesting like philosophical and moral questions to pose and yeah, it's a good time. I think if you're looking for a kind of light science fiction read that's just going to be fun and is going to entertain you. I think this is a really good one but if you're looking for like a really great piece of science fiction that you can really kind of sink your teeth into and you're going to love the characters I, I don't really know if this is going to be the one for you but it's still a fun time so yes that is Mickey 7 by Edward Ashton. If you have read this book I would love to know what you thought of it down in the comments below if you haven't, but I've encouraged you to read it, definitely let me know that too. And if you are interested in watching the movie, uh, you know, let me know that as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you've liked it. And please do subscribe if you'd like to hear more of me talking about books. I'll see you in my next one.